This shot um, is one of about, I'm thinking there are about eight or so, maybe more, um, angles that are used to create the illusion of extreme peril and height. Um, matte paintings are often used for enhancing distant scenery. Oftentimes they're used in stunt sequences to put the lead actors in a more perilous situation. And that this accomplishes kind of both and uh, creates uh, the illusion of, of being several stories off the street. Uh, this is a this is a, a definitely an iconic shot. You'll see it in any of the Blade Runner online fan base things. You'll always see this one included. You know, as as it's well. I mean, it, I, it might even be the cover of some of the books that they've made. But it's 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 a zinger. The production design on these shots, Ridley Scott insisted on, and he was really uh, behind all the good-looking stuff in this. Is um, Sid Mead. And so we actually had designs for these matte paintings done by Sid Mead, almost all of them. And um, we followed them as closely as possible because Ridley Scott wanted us to. And there, there were beautiful, smaller sketches done on illustration board. I believe Sid Mead was working in gouache, or it's a water base, uh, and he worked fast. But I mean, we had many good designs by Sid Mead and we were requested even though once we got into the matte painting stage and when Matthew was working on these matte paintings Ridley would come up with ideas and so they wouldn't always they'd start out as an exact copy of the Sid Mead design and then Ridley would suggest some differences that he wanted to do and so the matte paintings went through some variations during their painting stages most of these matte paintings um, there's very few exceptions are done in a process where you actually do a loose block in of the painting and you do a test composite first and it gets refined over a series of about a half dozen tests until it reaches the level of detail that's required and I believe Brandon in one of the earlier videos in front of this same painting um, was talking about the level of detail on these and this goes to the budget and the speed that has to you know has to go along with post-production we only put as much detail as is required once it looks good on film if you add any more detail it'll either look worse or if it still works you're just wasting time on detail that's not going to be appreciated and the camera really can't tell the difference we divided our time up i was working on the same easel in the evening that Matthew was painting on in the daytime. Matthew would show up typically at uh, EEG, at Trumbull's uh, shop, uh, usually at six in the morning and would go until about four in the afternoon. And he'd leave about that time and that's when they had me come on and paint on a night shift. So it was like a swing shift matte painting sh uh, thing. And he'd come in the next day and oftentimes I would start on some of these and they'd say, okay, just hand that off and Matthew will finish it. But most of the ones he did on Blade Runner, and I think there's probably about two dozen matte paintings or maybe more in that film, some that are just uh, patchwork to uh, join pieces together and, and skies and so forth. But um, there was a lot of good matte painting being done by Matthew Yurisich and his assistant at that time was Michelle Moen. I was just called in as an additional matte artist on about a half dozen shots. And I came in at night and worked that shift. But I did start this one out and I can see when I get back on top of it again, how much more Matthew had added to it, which is, I mean, beautiful work. And it, the illusion on film is pretty spectacular, if you recall, yeah. This is looking straight down on Harrison Ford, hanging by one hand, and he was actually shot because uh, Trumbull and, and Richard Urasich, the partners that, that were EEG, uh, never used blue screen in their 65 millimeter effects shots and in this case they wanted to have a good clean mat of him so he could be in front of the painting and they built a white background behind him and used a, a, a contrast difference mat optically pulled and they could actually increase the contrast and make a nice clean mat that way but they didn't want to go through the um, process of red green blue separations in 65 millimeter all of the dupe shots the the optical composite shots in Blade Runner were done on Eastman color intermediate duplicating film. And that's just one strip of color that's a fine grain, but it's also a different color range. And you'll see all these matte paintings that Matthew Yurisich did on this movie and the earlier Trumbull films, Close Encounters and Star Trek, the motion picture were painted to that duplicating stock. And it's actually has to be done in a lower contrast and a more muted color to match the look 
of the interpositive film. It's tricky because you have to transpose in your head while you're looking at the daily as a film clip on a light box. What else I can tell you? All of these shots in that fight sequence have a beautiful amount of other little bits of animation, signs and so forth that are blinking. And what they also have, and Dave Dreyer and the effects camera crew that shot elements, shot a whole lot of rain from different angles. They got up on the rooftop at the Max Ella facility and had uh, black on the pavement down below. I think it was just Dubatine or maybe it was a, a, a black cloth. And they actually lit up the rain very carefully and they had rain in an angle like this just falling away from camera in perspective. So you can see, and they, they did shoot elements like that, sweeping lights and, and rain and just items that would go into the optical composite and make the scene come to life more.